Well, according to the World Bank, the biggest challenge for Afghanistan's economy is finding sustainable sources of growth. The international community has pledged nearly $87 billion in aid since 2003. But corruption, poor infrastructure and other challenges have held back development. The economy has also been impacted by the drawdown of international security forces. The services sector that catered to the troop presence was especially hard hit. Growth slowed to an estimated 1% last year, down from 2.7% the previous year. It's expected to recover slightly this year. Well, for more on what's at stake for Afghanistan in these elections, I'm joined by Omar Stamad, a non-resident senior fellow with the Atlantic Council South Asia Center. He's also the founder and president of Silk Road Consulting. Thank you for joining us. You're welcome. So looking at preparedness on the ground, how likely are these threats of violence and, and poll closures to lead to a postponement or, or potentially mm. some election fraud concerns? Mm. Well, uh, security is a huge problem. The Taliban have obviously threatened to attack any polling station or anyone involved. Um, there are obviously the precautions have been taken. Uh, we hope that tomorrow will go uh, according to the plans that the security forces have. Uh, we'll have to see within the next three or four hours, the polls will start uh, and we'll see, first of all, what the turnout is going to be. There are a lot of issues that have to be dealt with. Now, as far as fraud is concerned, as you mentioned, it is a huge uh, issue on the minds of people. Uh, the, the, you know, the electoral commissions have done whatever they could uh, to mitigate fraud to the extent that they can. Uh, but not enough reform has been put in place, unfortunately, over the years. Uh, I think that the, the willingness on the part of the parts of the government in order to go and make this a more secure as well as a less fraudulent uh, process uh, has uh, to be tested tomorrow, and we'll see if the Afghans will believe in it. And we certainly saw that obviously this has been postponed uh, several times and former President Hamid Karzai argued that the vote shouldn't happen now. What are the arguments for and against that? Well, remember, this is happening at a time when over the last 11 months or so, the Americans have been pursuing a peace process in order to see if the Taliban can be uh, brought under the tent of peace in Afghanistan. Uh, first of all, the Americans want to see if they can find a, a, an arrangement whereby they could leave Afghanistan, but also make sure that Afghanistan doesn't fall apart and that the Taliban can talk to other Afghans and create a probably a power-sharing arrangement in Afghanistan. So while this has been going on, there's been fighting going on, and elections uh, are, have been on the calendar. Right. So this has created a bit of a complexity in terms of which one to handle, which one to pursue. And things are on hold with the peace process, but things have been moving forward with the elections. So then looking at this election, what is most prevalent in the minds of voters right now? I think security is number one. but. With all the talk about fraud, I think the number one issue tomorrow on people's mind will be, uh, can I go from my home to the polling station? Can I come back safely? But will my vote count? And will the economy uh, get better? Will also governance get better? Will we fight corruption? Will we, at the end of the day, have a peaceful resolution of the Afghan conflict? Now, we know this is a pretty crowded field. There's about 16 people running for president. Talk a little bit about the front runners and what their economic platforms are. Sure. So, so far, um, about five or six of these individuals have either dropped out or joined. So we're left with about a dozen. The two front runners are the current leaders of Afghanistan, the president, Ashraf Ghani, and the chief executive, Abdullah Abdullah. Uh, everybody thinks that it's basically between these two. Um, and, uh, you know, Ashraf Ghani has been known as being sort of a uh, Western-educated technocrat, but the result of his five years for many Afghans has not been the best that they expected out of him, uh, especially because the security situation has not been that well, and also governance has suffered. Abdullah, as a chief executive, has shown uh, some weaknesses in some areas, some strength in other areas. So people have a mixed uh, sort of judgment and feeling about both individuals, but they are the, the front runners. And again, the, the main question will be, are elections going to be credible? Or are they going to be acceptable? At the end of the day, will it count? And we did see that in terms of the economy, obviously people need to, to work and know that there's a, a future there, but against the backdrop of, of violence, it is hard to get more investment in the country. Yeah. How should you characterize Afghanistan's economy right now? 
I think Afghanistan's economy, uh, to describe it, is very fragile. It is a still a war-torn economy. It is an economy that has a lot of potential down the road, as long as we can secure the country, stabilize the economy, end the politics of the country, end the insurgency that the Taliban are waging, make sure that countries around us are playing a positive and constructive role and not a destructive role, and that the international community continu continues to be engaged in Afghanistan uh, for as long as it's needed. Not forever, but for as long as it's needed. All right, thank you so much for your insights. That was Omar Samad there, Senior Fellow with the Atlantic Council South Asia Center and Founder and President of Silk Road Consulting. Thank you so much.